Hey, how you doing? Duff here, and um, it's time for another Duff 3D video. I'm still working on this damn part that you saw on my ender. Um, not only was it stuck to the bed like cement, uh, the supports are very, very um, difficult to remove. Um, yeah. This, with as well as the stuff is sticking to the bed of the ender, I'm debating if I even need to use heat on the bed at all. Um, so yeah, that's just one of the things I wanted to touch on um, in this uh, edition. Uh, I've been doing a lot of 3D printing. I've been printing more EUC stands. Got this one here, just finished up a couple days ago. Um, I've been printing my uh, some of my characters from WoW. This, this was actually printed on the Ender. It's not done yet. Cindy's painting it. Uh, but yeah, this was done on the Ender. I exported the model from WoW. And I uh, got a 3D model of it. Um, it was It's a little glitchy. Like some of the stuff didn't actually come across for some reason. Uh, but it's, it's not bad overall. Cindy was actually painting the uh, the Kappa Cat. Making it look nice. And I also printed this Porg model. That I saw Uncle Jesse had on his channel. I actually I printed that and... There's some problems with it, like there was a big uh, line right here and one of one of his arms had fallen off, but Cindy actually repaired it and made it look good and painted it, so that's that's quite an impressive project, I think. And uh, you know, a couple of these hilly things, like you know, I printed this. This was on the ender as well. And uh, yeah, I've been busy anyways. So anyways, my, my current issues um, with the ender like you saw with me trying to get that part off, and that part actually, this is actually a fan mod for the Ender, um, where it it changes the angle of the fan so it actually serves double duty as a, as a parts cooling fan, um, and, and everything I've heard about it is good, but the supports on this, it's it's just it's a mess. And even when I get them off, it's gonna still be a mess. So I might just reprint this on one of my other printers. Um, but what my issue is, is it's, it's stuff is sticking too, too well, you know. I have to. I have to apply ridiculous amounts of force to get some parts off. Um, and uh, I ordered something to address it, but I think I could probably address it uh, just by tweaking the level of my bed. I think. I think what's going on is my my first layer is it's too tight, and it's really really pressing the plastic onto that surface. Uh, and uh, it's, it's causing it to be very, very uh, hard to get off. Now, I'm also wondering if part of that is because very early on when I had the Ender, I had some uh, material on there that I couldn't get off, and I wound up using uh, a bit of acetone, which I, I remember reading in other spots that acetone is a good way to refresh those type of surfaces, but it seems like since then it actually made it like too grippy and I don't know if that's normal if maybe I overdid it with the acetone I, I don't know but I'm having a real hard time getting stuff off but so I'm either going to mess around more with a level on there run some prints with an unheated bed or utilize this I bought another piece of Boro Oscillate glass this is a uh, six by six piece uh, quarter inch thick um, it's not quite the size of the bed, it's a little bit smaller, but I very rarely am going um, edge to edge with a print anyway, so I think I'll be okay. So what I'm thinking, if, if I can't get it fixed by trying those first two things, I'll wind up putting glass on there and see how that works, because I, I have a much bigger piece of glass like that on my CR-10, and um, it, it's worked out very, very well for me. It's level, uh, it doesn't seem to have any kind of bowing in it. Um, and uh, the glass is expensive, even for that little small piece with shipping, it was like 24 bucks, 25 bucks. So it, it's not cheap stuff, but um, like I said, based on, on how my CR-10 works, that's been working pretty well um, for me. So I'd like to do something similar to the end, or maybe, if I can't fix it using simpler uh, solutions. So um, as far as what else is going on, let's see, I'm still liking having the double benches in here with more room. Uh, the one issue I have is the way that my layout is here, unfortunately, if I was to do something very, very high on the CR-10, I'm going to have an issue because this sh 
shelf is going to eventually make contact with the extruder. So there's a good chance that the CR10 is actually going to wind up over here where there's nothing above it and one of those printers might wind up over here. So that's, I, I, I haven't ever done anything max, max height on the CR10, but um, I, I might be moving it just in case, just in case I get the urge to do so. So yeah, things might be sh shifted up a, or shifted around a little bit in the near future. All right, so let's see what else is going on. Oh, one of the other things I made, and actually this is one of the deals that I made from scratch was I had an issue with, um, I have a, a hose holder outside for my pool hoses, which, which are in segments. Uh, did I say that right, a hose holder? I think so. Anyways, a hose holder is on the wall. It's like a little, it's a series of like little U-shaped uh, sockets, I guess you would say. And then the hose slides into it like this. Well, the, the, um, the clearance between the, the hose and the um, holder, the hoses are getting worn out. And as they're getting worn out, they're actually losing a little bit of plastic and they're having a tendency to fall down. So I'm like, well, let's try to 3D print something to address that. So this is what I did. It looks very simple. Uh, it, this took me a lot more work than it should have. But basically I just clipped this on uh, at the top end of the hose. I measured it with my digital caliper. Uh, it, it fits on snugly and it prevents it from falling out inadvertently. So just another example of a um, practical use of 3D printing and what you can do. But in the same, the same line of subject matter, for me to do this in Fusion 360 was a royal pain in the ass. Um, I know lots and lots of people use Fusion 360. Matthias uses it all the time, makes incredible things with it. Um, but I have found it very, very unintuitive to use Fusion 360. You know, I've, I've been working in the computer industry for years and years and years. I've done a lot of work with imaging stuff, you know, to manipulate uh, graphics and stuff like that, imaging for like some uh, web, web stuff I've done over the years and some other graphic projects. So. You know, I have a basic understanding of how that works, and it seemed like everything that I was doing in Fusion 360 was uh, different. It, it, nothing worked the way that I expected it to work. And like anything, you know, if, if you work at it long enough, it'll, it'll become more intuitive, but um, as of now, I still have been struggling a lot on it. So anyways, just to make something like this, because I, I, I thought, okay, well, all I really need is an arch, so what I did was I made made two arches in Fusion 360, a smaller one and a bigger one. I drew a line here and here, and then I just wanted to fill it so I could fill that space and extrude it, you know, to, I think this is like five millimeters in thickness. And I, I couldn't do it, I couldn't figure it out. It was, <laughs> I just, uh, again, it, it was, uh, it's me not being knowledgeable on the product, but I, I could not figure it out. So what I wound up doing was just making uh, two concentric circles punching out the middle, extruding it. So I had a circle uh, that I exported as an STL, and then just in my slicer software, I actually just sliced off the end to give me my arch, you know, which is obviously not the, the ideal way to do things, but that's, that's how I wound up with this. But the, the point of that story was, just today, my one buddy up north uh, named Charlie, I got him into 3D printing just recently. I, he, has, he has just started with the Flash Forge Finder, and I told him about Fusion 360, and, and uh, he's a programmer, um, and he came to a lot of the same conclusions that I did, that it was a real pain in the ass, and it just didn't make sense the way things worked in there. And he did some digging, digging around and asked me if I ever tried Tinkercad. And Tinkercad was something I've heard on, I've heard about on the forums, people, I've heard people mention it, never gave it a second of thought, never looked at it, and I didn't have any idea what it was. So I'm like, oh, okay, because uh, Charlie said it was it was way easier for him. It worked a lot better. And um, I'm like, oh, okay. Well, let me let me let me punch it into Google, and, and I find out that it's just it's a site, it's a website where you do all the creating online. Not only is it a website, but it's a website that's run by Autodesk, the same people that make Fusion 360. I'm like, well, what the hell? I could log in with my with my uh, Autodesk account, and I was in. And I went through the tutorial. And I can't tell you how much easier that was to use Tinkercad versus uh, Fusion 360. Everything uh, makes sense. Um, manipulating stuff, it, it, 
you just have to try it. If you've never tried Tinkercad and you found yourself struggling with uh, conventional CAD software, you are in for a treat because it is just like night and day. Um, I have tons of ideas to you how I can modify existing STLs. You can do that easily in Tinkercad. There's like one one button uh, publishing to Thingiverse. Um, you can uh, import SVGs. There's all these uh, predefined custom shape generators that you can do gears and knobs and they have one that produces states, you know, images of states. Um, it's, it's crazy and it's, it's free. And uh, it's, it's like I've been doing 3D printing for um, not, not quite a year, but close to a year. And it's like now the light of day has, has shone upon me. Shone upon me, shone upon me, shined. I don't know. But yeah, it's like, oh, I can actually do things without it being a huge hassle and pain in the ass. You know, so the, the, the few things that I've made in Fusion 360, man, it's been... It's been a struggle just to do very simple things, and uh, it's not going to be anymore. I'll tell you that, and uh, I'm looking forward to trying it out. So, um, I, I have a small clip playing that, that just shows me doing some stuff in uh, in Tinkercad, and uh, yeah, if there's one thing you get out of this video, it's try Tinkercad to make your own objects because it is great. You know, obviously, it doesn't have the power that Fusion does. You can't do some of the uh, well, I'm sure a lot of the stuff you can do in Fusion 360, but but everything that I can do is exactly what I need, just to make simple, functional shapes or to modify something to better suit my needs. It's just it's great for that. It really is. Okay. I'm I'm printing something right now. I'm printing a Duff 3D logo on the Finder. Um, that that um, yeah, I, I made a the Duff 3D little button thing here that you see hanging. I made that in Fusion 360, and that was, that again, took me a while to figure out, even though it's a very simple thing. Um, and Tinkercad is trivial. It's so easy. Uh, so easy. So, yeah, I think that's it. Really, that's, that's, that's uh, the only things that are coming to my mind as far as my 3D printing world right now. I'd like to get this mod on, see how it helps with, um, I, know, I know it's supposed to help with stringing and that kind of stuff. But I really got to get the, the print bed situation worked out on the finder because, um, not on the finder, on the ender, because uh, it's really causing me problems. So we want to address that as soon as possible. So that's it for now. Um, you may be noticing in my 3D videos that I have promotion codes before. If you're looking for an ender, if you're looking for a CR10, uh, feel free to use, it, use those affiliate links if you want. I also have the links to Amazon for a CR10 as well. Um, for those of you that don't want to wait as long. So that's it. I hope everyone's having a great 3D time out there. And until next time, Duffman out. Don't forget to like and subscribe.